In this video, I'm gonna talk about a totally just crazy build for the Hunter. And in this build, it requires no seasonal mods. You heard me correctly. I do have some seasonal mods to add to this, but for the most part, this is using the core capabilities of Arc 3.0, using Liar's Handshake, and then using some existing Elemental Well uh, mods. So again, this is a just a totally broken build that I will, and again, Arc has always been about getting in there, doing damage, you know, and now it's about being fast also, but they've added damage resistance. So this is a build I'm seriously gonna be considering taking into the first day King's Fall when it comes out, and also GMs. First off, since this is melee based, I'm going to ba I'm going to use some specific abilities out of the Arc Strider. First off, I'm gonna use Gambler's Dodge. That allows me to get my melee back really quickly if I dodge your enemies. I'm gonna be near enemies a lot. I'm gonna use Combination Flow. Combination Flow increases your melee damage by 60% per stack, and it stacks three times. So the way you do this is you basically dodge, do a melee, you dodge again, do another melee. You do that three times. Remember, the, the stacks are not 60 plus 60 plus 60. It's 60 times 60 times 60. So again, a lot of extra damage. And when you do hit with that charge melee, you get your class ability back, which is your dodge, which again, then you can do your gambler's dodge and get your melee back again. And then I'm gonna use blink. Blink allows me to get out of dodge. Huh, funny, right? But it allows me to get into trouble, like if I need to get to a champion really quickly, or if I'm in trouble, to get out of dodge, to basically get away from enemies and heal up. The next part of this build is around Lethal Current. And Lethal Current, I'll be honest with you, um, I coming into the season with this aspect, I thought oh, that would be good, but this is really, really good. And honestly, it's outside of doing anything else, this is really the thing that powers this build more than anything else. After a dodge, melee has longer range and jolts targets and creates a damaging aftershock. Now remember, jolt is that thing where when it hits an enemy, it sends out other damage to other enemies, right? So it's a great thing for controlling ads. The other thing is, once you damage a jolted target with melee, it blinds them. So, you're going to get damage resistance, and I'll talk about that a little bit. But the other thing with this is, you're going to be blinding so many enemies. If they can't shoot at you, they can't damage you. So, again, this is something that's going to allow you to do a lot of ad control. I'm also going to use Flow State. Flow State, when while amplified, your dodge recharges quicker, and you're resilient, and you reload faster. So... Remember, you get your Amplified by just doing Arc Damage. So if you use Arc Weapons or if you use your Melee, you're going to constantly be Amplified. And since you're going to be Amplified a lot in this, you're going to get your Dodge quicker in addition to all the other things we're doing in this build. But you also get Resilience. And that's going to allow you to stay in the fight longer. So again, just a great thing. Next, I'm going to talk about some of the fragments that I use. So again, there's only one fragment that's mandatory to build. The rest of them are, are nice to have. That is the spark resistance. When you're surrounded, you get damage resistance. So you're going to get damage resistance from flow state. You're going to get damage resistance from spark resistance. This has always been the weakness of arc. And this is what's going to allow you to be able to stay in those more end game content and be able to live you know, longer than normal. In addition, until some of the other fragments open up, I'm going to be using these just as extras, but they aren't mandatory for this build. That is Spark of Volts, Finishers make you Amplified, again just to answer the Amplified fantasy. Spark of Focus, after sprinting for a short period, your class regen is increased. So again, allows you to get your class ability back quicker. And then Spark of Shock, Grenades Jolt Enemies, you're already jolting enemies with Lethal Current. But you can also do it with the, with your grenade, and then you can melee them, and when you melee them, it blinds them. Again, it's about controlling the battlefield. On my armor, I'm going to start out with two times hands-on. Hands-on gives you super regenerative melee kills. You're going to be doing a lot of melee kills in this build, so you're going to get your supers frequently, so that's something you will like. And again, the supers with Arc, especially the new one, which I'll talk about in a second, that one's really good, and getting it quicker is going to, again, help you to control everything. Well of Ions. This is a 30% buff to melee damage with when you get an uh, Elemental Well. So again, Elemental Wells, we're going to be generating this again with Melee Wellmaker. Me melee Wellmaker allows you to make wells and melee kills. Again, you're going to be doing that all the time. So you're going to have wells all over the place. Then Font of Might. Font of Might is, again, allows your arc weapons to do more damage. So you don't need this unless you're going to use an arc weapon. You'll be using a lot of arc weapons, so I can see where you'd want to use it. Again, that's 25% buff. And then Font of Wisdom. Font of Wisdom basically takes your intellect 100, which is the fastest uh, your fastest regen for supers, and that lasts for 30 seconds. So again, all of these, you're going to be constantly creating wells because you're going to be meleeing, you're going to be dodging, you're going to get your melee back. So you're going to get a ton of wells. So just basically add all of the different benefits that you can have every time you pick up a well. It's really, really going to be super easy. And you don't have to worry about things like seeking wells because since you're going to be dodging in the area that you're trying to do things in, 
you're going to be picking up the wells. So no concerns there. The other thing in this build is I'll be using the new Super, the Gathering Storm for the Hunter. The primary reason is I could use Arc Strider, right? The traditional Arc Strider. But the thing with this is this allows me, let's say I'm really in trouble, okay? I can use this then to basically put the staff down, which goes out and damages things around it, which allow me to clear anything out that's giving me problems. The other thing is this is a great damage buff against bosses because it stays in one place. Now, if you have a mobile boss, that's one thing. But if you have a boss that stays in one place, then this is really going to help out with boss DPS. So again, protects you and does good damage against the boss. Now let's go over what really sets this build apart. That's Liar's Handshake. If you guys are familiar with that, it has an ability called Crosscut. Using arc melee abilities or being hit by a melee attack, that's key, will allow you to come back with a power ca powerful counter punch. Now, the key to that is you could obviously be using your melee, but let's say other things are meleeing you. And again, you're near enemies, that's very well gonna happen. You're gonna have this buff very frequently. Now it's a very short buff, but it has a very, very powerful counter attack. And I'll show you that here in a second. So let's talk about your melee and how it's impacted in this. So your base melee damage in the area that I'm testing is 8,675, okay? If you do the combination flow times three, that goes to 30, 35,531. That's pretty decent damage. And that's 410% buff. So that's pretty good. If you add a well, if you happen to pick up a well, which lasts for 10 seconds, you would get an additional 30%, which goes to 46,180 or 533% damage buff again really good that that's just a hit that's not using any of your weapons here's where it comes in even better though let's say you have a one-two punch hand, uh, shotgun if you have a one-two punch shotgun let's say you've done the three times okay you picked up your well you do that first hit to hit the boss now this would also be where something hits you right but that's going to start the timer on your cross cut then you do your one-two punch right and then you follow up with melee just right afterward that final melee is going to have a damage of 191,867 from a melee. From a melee. This is a 22,000% or yes, 22,000% damage increase over the original melee. Or to put it in terms, that's like hitting him with 22 <laughs> fists at the same time. Now, one thing to keep in mind, these are all buffs. Your team can still do debuffs like tether and other things that can build on top of this. So this is an incredibly broken thing. So again, that's the point of this build. You're going to be constantly being able to live, kill enemies really quickly with your melee. You're going to be dodging, being mobile, you know, getting getting amplified, moving all over the battlefield really quickly. And then you're going to use your melee to take things out. Now, you can pair on top of this all sorts of arc weapons. You could use Anarchy, you could use Acrius, right? And that's where the Font of Might will come in handy too. That will allow you a Font of Might to do a 25% damage increase in anything that's arc. However, Acri specifically, because as Trench Bearer, if you're doing melees, you can do an 87% damage increase. And for Acrius, in my, my testing, that came up to about 124,000 if you got a crit per hit. Again, that's an additional piece of damage. So, you know, I guess technically you could go with double shotgun. You could go with your Trench Barrel. You could go with your Acrius if you're on a boss. We'll have to see what that looks like. I mean, that might be a good option. Heck, you could try to go triple shotgun. But again, the point I'm trying to make is that there are a ton of of options for doing damage, for living, and basically for just having fun. Because honestly, I haven't had fun with a build like this in a long time. So I would definitely try it out. You know, like I said, feel free to drop it to the comments. Let me know what you think. You know, again, I will probably make a small tweak to this build once I get to some of the later artifact mods. But this build is complete without artifact mods, which is really, really crazy. That's the video, guys. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you, Guardians in the Tower.